My name is Mr. Bing, and I'm joined here with, well, I'll let him introduce himself. Uh, I'm Dave Bohaska. I'm a paleontologist at the Smithsonian Institution, and you guys sent some really great questions about fossils, and I'm going to try to answer them for you today. That's right. So as Mr. Bohaska says, you guys sent in some amazing questions, which we're going to get into. But I have one question first. Mr. Bohaska, where are you? We're at Calvert Cliffs today. This is a famous fossil locality. It's, it's about 15 million years old. 15 million years old? That sounds really old. And you said that it was a fossil locality. And that actually brings us to our very first question. What are fossils and are they all animals? Fossils are any evidence of past life. Uh, they can be as young as 10,000 years old or as old as about 3 billion years. They can be both animals and plants. So, for example, this, uh, these are some fossil ferns that are about 300 million years old. These are from a uh, coal mine in Pennsylvania. Uh, here's a modern fern that will give you some idea of what they look like. Can you see the similarity? Now I can see a lot of similarities between that modern day fern and that fossilized fern. So that answers our question that it's not all animals, but are there animal fossils too? Other fossils can be animals, of course. Uh, this is a fossil shell, for example, a fossil snail. And this is a piece of fossil bone. This is part of the backbone of a whale that came from here. It's about 15 million years old. Now what Mr. Bohaska just showed you was part of a whale backbone. And what he means by that is if you go on your back and you put your hands up and down the middle, you'll feel these little bumps. What those bumps are is your vertebra. And those vertebra, vertebrae, make up your backbone. But if you compare what Mr. Bohaska just showed, a whale vertebra, just one small part of the backbone, is much bigger than it is on us. So now going on to the next question you guys ask, where can you find fossils and how do they get found? Most fossils are found in sedimentary rocks, uh, which means they were probably underwater. Uh, they're buried in the mud or sand, which preserves them. This is an example of that. This was once the ocean here, and this was the bottom of the ocean. And all those white things that you see are fossil shells about 15 million years old. They fell to the bottom of the ocean and got buried and preserved. The way we find fossils is uh, basically you walk and look. We really don't dig until we actually see something. So, uh, I work on fossil whales. I would walk along here very carefully and uh, hope to see a little bit of bone uh, sticking out. Other people work on fossil shells, so they would have a really easy time here. Wow, so a lot of finding fossils is kind of walking and looking. But this goes on to our next question. Where are most fossils found? Most fossils are found in sedimentary rocks which were formed underwater, either in lakes, rivers, or in the ocean. And because the ocean is the biggest area, that's where most fossils are found in old ocean bottoms. This is an example of an old ocean bottom right here. And you can see the millions of fossils. Every one of those white shells is about 15 million years old and is a fossil. Wow, that is a lot of fossils. So now that we know where fossils are found, the next thing that you guys asked are what tools do you need to find fossils? Your most important tool, of course, are your eyes. You usually do not dig until you actually see something that's uh, important. So you walk along and look at the ground and hope to see a little bit of a fossil exposed. 
Wow, so kind of the most important tool out there is one that pretty much all of us have, our eyes. But are there any other tools that you use, Mr. Bohaska? Some of the tools I use to collect fossils, this is my field bag. And my most important tool is my notebook. When I find something that I want to keep, I write down where I found it and what layer I found it in. As you can see, the fossils are in different layers. So that's really interesting, because of course finding the fossil itself is a lot of fun, but it's not the most important thing, or at least not one of the most important things when it comes to finding fossils. You also have to be keeping a journal and writing it down, right? Often the information that comes with a fossil is as important or more important than the fossil itself. Things like where we found it and what layer it's in is very important, so I write that down in my notebook. Other tools I have uh, for digging, if I have to dig, I'll use, uh, this is an oyster knife. And again, this is only if I have permission to dig. For really big jobs, I might actually have to use a pick uh, like this and actually dig a big hole if, if I was collecting a whale. That's really interesting. But wait a minute. I think if you actually look there, I think there's actually a whale bone right there in those cliffs. This is a piece of fossil bone here. It looks like a piece of the lower jaw of a whale. So this would be about 15 million years old. Well, there you go. We just used the most important tool out there, our eyes, and we found a fossil. Now we have to wait until we get permission, but then we might be able to use some of those other tools to get those fossils out. Now, another question you guys asked, and it's a really good question, do you ever find regular bones in with the fossils? That's a good one. Mr. Bohaska? Uh, yes, sometimes we find modern day bones uh, mixed in with fossils, so it can be a little confusing, particularly down here on the beach. For example, right here, this is a modern day deer bone that probably died on the beach. Uh, fell over the cliff or got washed in and then rotted. So this is a modern deer bone. But all of this shell, there's a lot of fossil shell here. Now this is a modern day horseshoe crab. So things do get mixed up sometimes. Wow, it's a good thing that you guys asked that question because it looks like both regular bones and fossils can get mixed up sometimes, like with just regular deer. But that makes me wonder, does that mean that the only time that bones can get mixed in is from natural causes? In addition to things that kind of happen naturally, uh, sometimes uh, uh, people drop things. So for example, there's a picnic table right there. If somebody was eating uh, fried chicken, they might drop their bones here and then they get uh, mixed in with the fossils also. Uh-oh, then I better be careful not to throw this where I shouldn't be throwing it, because then it might get mixed in with some fossils. That's a very good point, so I'll be careful with that. Now the next question that you guys sent in is why is it that some fossils seem to have holes in them? Fossils can have holes in them for a number of different reasons. This is a backbone of a whale and the hole here is where the spinal cord, the big nerve that goes down the back, goes through the, the backbone. There are also holes on the side where blood vessels and nerves go through. Here's a piece of a dolphin jaw, and these holes were where the teeth were in the sockets.
This is a fossil snail. And if you see this little hole here, this was done by a snail like this. This is a moon snail. And what they do is go along the ocean bottom and then when they find a shell, they actually drill a hole into the shell and eat the animal on the inside. So it looks like there's a lot of reasons why fossils have holes in them. But I saw at the end that moon snail, it was all white. And that reminded me of another really good question that you guys brought in. You were asking, why are all fossils white? A lot of fossils are white. As you can see here, most of these shells are white. Some of them probably had colors when they were alive, but colors often decompose over time, so they turn white. But not all fossils are white. For example, this shell is actually brown. The color in this is actually preserved uh, for 15 million years. These bones are a brown color. They started out white and then minerals get into them and change their color. Some, some bones are actually black. So it looks like fossils can be all sorts of colors, including brown and black. Now, another question that's kind of been answered a little bit, but it was another one that was brought in, is when did the fossils get buried? And then how old are they? Fossils can be anywhere from 10,000 years old to about 3 billion years old. Dinosaurs, for example, lived until 65 million years. So fossils actually could have been uh, found buried at different times. So it sounds like there's quite a range going from 10,000 years to 3 billion. But to answer that question, they were buried a long, long time ago. Now, I heard some mention of dinosaurs, but a lot of time when people think about fossils, they also think of the megalodon or the megalodon. So, can you still find megalodon bones? Yes, although usually what you find are megalodon teeth. Sharks, including megalodon, actually do not have bones. They have what's known as cartilage. Cartilage is a soft tissue like the part of your nose that supports it here. And soft tissues usually rot. Now there are exceptions. Some sharks like put calcium in their cartilage. So this is, it's actually not a bone. We, this would be a backbone, uh, but this is actually fossilized cartilage. Now this one's not megalodon. This is another type of shark. But just to show you, this is a modern day shark jaw. And all of this part is cartilage. So this would rot away too quickly to become a fossil most of the time. So the only thing you find are the teeth. So it looks like we don't actually find megalodon bones, but we do find megalodon teeth. And the reason for that has to do with the fact that sharks actually don't have bones. They have cartilage. And as Mr. Be Bohaska was saying, if you want to see, because we have some cartilage, if you feel your nose and the way it goes back and forth, this part of your nose is made out of cartilage. And if you go and you feel your ears, the way that you can bend them around, they're also made out of cartilage. So that's why you tend to only find their teeth. But this brings about another question, because we've talked about dinosaurs, and we've talked about megalodons, and neither of them are around anymore. So this brings about our final question that you guys posed. Essentially, what happened? Why did all the dinosaurs turn into fossils? Dinosaurs died about 65 million years ago when an asteroid hit Earth around the Yucatan Peninsula and created a giant crater. Most dinosaurs actually did not become fossils. Many of them died and rotted away. Only dinosaurs that got buried very quickly got preserved and were made into fossils. Now, actually, some dinosaurs, in a sense, are still with us. 
It turns out that living birds are actually related to dinosaurs. So strictly speaking, you might have seen a dinosaur today if you've seen a bird. Wow, so the next time you see a bird out there, you're actually looking at something that might be related to dinosaurs. But that's actually it for all of your questions, and hopefully that helped to answer them. So thank you, Mr. Bohasco, but I actually have one more question for you. Do you think you could show us what it looks like to be looking for fossils to see if, you know, maybe we can find something? This is a good place uh, to find megalodon teeth. I should tell you that they are pretty rare, so, uh, but we'll give it a try. The best place is on the beach, uh, right here, a good gravel like this in the water. And then another place to look is up here where the beach was last night. So you get, and look very carefully, and they tend to be black or uh, brown. Well, this isn't a megalodon, but this is maybe a little more typical. There's the tooth right there. This is a fossil tiger shark. That's not too bad. Let's keep looking, maybe we'll get lucky. Ooh, look here. Wow. So there's a megalodon in the wild. Notice that this is black. When this was still in the live shark, it was white, and it was buried, and then the color is from minerals that petrified it. Wow, how lucky was that? We found a megalodon tooth. And so thank you very much, Mr. Bohaska. And you can see that there's a lot of future scientists and paleontologists out there. So I hope you guys continue to have fun learning about the wonders of fossils and what they are.